What is up guys, it is the Redstone Scientist here, and I am here with episode 8 of Saved YouTube's Gems, bringing you the best Minecraft content the web has to offer. In May 2014, I started compiling a list of epic proportions with the most interesting, original, or any other quality I can list, that I felt put it among the most valuable technical Minecraft videos on the entire internet. I still keep adding to this list every day, and it essentially contains what I consider to be the internet's greatest technical Minecraft videos ever made. You can find out more about the playlist as well as this series in episode 0, which I will link to on screen and in the description. As always, all opinions expressed today are just that, opinions! And I would love to hear yours in the comments. Also, stick around, because it, this series is going to be getting an upgrade and reformatted for season 2, which will start with episode 11. I'd love to hear any ideas you guys have in the comments. So for today's episode, we're going to be looking at the best videos from playlist entries 141 through 160. Remember that some of these gems I ended up including for the opportunity to teach you guys what makes a good video. We also have three honorable mentions today. First up is part two of Avondale's Redstone API series for the Knox Crew Game Show, which we discussed at length in episode four of Saved. Link in the description and on screen. Then we have two videos which show really useful and unique online generators. The first is by MC Labs 15 who created a hologram generator, which allows you to create colored pixel art images using name tags. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's a similar method to Asdajiki's old hologram filter for 1.8. Speaking of which, MC Labs has both a 1.8 and a 1.9 version of this generator, so make sure to check it out. And for the third honorable mention, Mr. Goretto, yes, that Mr. Goretto, created a generator that allows you to make entities move towards each other. Now that might not sound like much, but go and watch the video to see some of the unbelievable things this enables you to do. Now before I get into today's gems, I should mention that there will only be four in today's episode, not the usual five. And not necessarily because there weren't enough good videos in the nominees, it's just that I didn't feel there was enough to merit a mention in this series. I mean, absolutely no offense at all to the creators, they're still great creations and will remain in the saved folder. If you'd like to know more about this decision and why I made it, check out the video I will link to on the screen now. But let's get back to today's episode. First off, we have a video by one of my favorite YouTubers, Simply Sark. In this video, he gives us a glimpse into an alternate universe where Minecraft has pissed in minecarts. Let's take a look. Hello. The other day, I made a video on Super Pistons, a new type of piston that allows you to extend the normal piston's reach further than the regular one block. There are basically two reactions to that video, people who loved it, and dirty liars. So this does exactly what you're thinking it does. It allows you to transfer a block from point A to point B via a rail. So this is actually pretty damn cool. So let's take a look at it. So I'll just place a block here, you'll notice it outputs a signal over there, and when I press this button, it's going to transfer it. So let's take a look. Picks it up. In the usual Simply Sark fashion, there's an aura of mystery around his videos. I've mentioned this in the past. The thing I love so much about this video, and the other If Minecraft Had blank videos on his channel, is that he's proposing a legitimate suggestion for a feature, but unlike the thousands of other suggestions that you might see on the Minecraft Suggestions Reddit, you can actually see what this would look like and how it would function in-game. And not only that, but it's executed so well. But Sark didn't write a mod for this suggestion, he actually achieves everything in this video with command blocks and a resource pack. By the way, I asked Sark to clarify that there was indeed a resource pack, but he said he didn't really remember. Now this creation may not soar above all of our heads like some other gems, but it's a simple, very useful feature implemented so well, even if it's not fully functional and just really for show. It's not like you can see all the strings being pulled to make this happen, it's really well done. <clears throat> Mojang, please add Piston Minecraft. Remember my Zuma Games' old video called The Flame of Hope that I featured back in episode 6? It was a supremely cool and brand new mechanic that my Zuma perfected for that creation. In this video, he gives us a look behind the scenes. Let's take a look. Hello everyone, and welcome to another Redstone video with Cass on the Mizuma channel. So guys, um, a few days ago uh, I showcased this invention, which I was going to call the Hifter Expendable Campfire or something, but I came up with a more user-friendly name, so I named it the Magic Campfire. 
Uh, this is the first expendable version I came up with. So as I mentioned, this is a kind of behind-the-scenes video for the Flame of Hope I showcased in a previous episode. But first, he shows us a new creation using the same mechanics. So what's so special about the concepts in this video is that up until this point, lighting blocks on fire seamlessly from under the ground, you know, moving into, in the, into place, was extremely difficult and complicated to pull off. Keep in mind that if you move netherrack with a piston, any fire that was on it will be put out. But my Zuma found a way to make pulling this off so much easier and was able to make it expandable for this video. There's not much else to say about it since it's mostly a tutorial, but I highly recommend checking it out for some really unique inspiration. And now for something completely different. Here's another video by Simply Sark where he shows us an old trick in the community that can be used to make hidden portal rooms. Let's take a look. Hello, and welcome back to Minecraft Classics, the series where we take a look at the good old stuff. A little bit like your grandma. She may be a little bit crusty, but... She can still move her hips. Today we start our demonstration in the nether, of all places. And you will immediately notice. So we end up here. Somewhere kind of uninteresting. It's just a, you know, a room. But what if I told you this portal hides a little bit of a dirty secret? The thing is, is that this isn't an ordinary portal. I mean, you can walk through it and you can use it like the other regular portals. But this portal can take us to two different places. And I'm going to show you how it works. So. If you just stand in it, and at the very last second were to jump, you'll find that we've ended up somewhere completely different. This is... I mentioned in the video explaining the reason why there are only four gems today, which I mentioned earlier, the different qualities that can get a video in the save folder versus the qualities that get a video actually featured on this series. Well, this video quote-unquote scores pretty high in both the video quality slash form as well as the usefulness and originality criteria. Although I don't believe this was Sark's original idea entirely, I mean, after all, the series is called Minecraft Classics, I hadn't really seen a video showing a concept quite like this before. As far as usefulness goes, I certainly know that I'll be using this trick in TRS's world. People are always trying to come up with new ways of hiding rooms and different treasures, and this one is just super cool and easy to use. In addition, by using colored wool and different setups in a testing world, Sark provides a very clear explanation of this mechanic in a way that absolutely any Minecraft player could understand. Definitely check this one out. For the final gem today, the first person I ever befriended online in Minecraft, TDL, or the Dude Lisby, sweeps the competition with a video of a super efficient spider farm, as well as a unique explanation of how it works. Truly a video deserving of the title, Pick of the Bunch. I love TDL's videos. Now, often the content of these kinds of videos can get lost in the editing tricks. However, TDL uses this space to give you some concise and clear information. Not just about how spiders spawn, but also gives you information about the structure, function, and form of this farm, which is insanely fast, by the way, at 13,000 string per hour, and also is extremely compact. So what can we learn from this video? Well, I think that everyone who makes these kinds of highly cinematic and edited showcases, now granted this is not one of the most highly edited videos compared to some other ones I've seen, can take note that just because you're having a cinematic shot doesn't mean that you can't communicate something within it as well. The YouTube community seems to be pretty split about whether or not highly edited showcases are a good thing or not. You can read more about the con side of this argument in this essay by Phenomen that I will link in the description. But I think we can all agree that this video doesn't overdo it. It's just the right number, duration, and kind of shots that we need to see everything we need to know in just two minutes. Congrats, TDL, on snagging today's pick of the bunch. So unfortunately, that is all I have time for today. Make sure to go and watch the full versions of the videos I featured, all linked in the description. Of course, all of the entries for today's batch are in the save folder for a reason. And if you have a chance, you should try to check them out. But if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, a comment, share it with your friends, or better yet, hit that subscribe button. Or even better, subscribe to someone I featured today. Make sure to check out the jam-packed description for more science. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.